If they ain't got it, I'ma mask up and take it. 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 The dope boys in the building. What's up? The dope boys. What's up? The dope boys. What's up? The dope boys in the building. Yeah. What's up? The dope boys. What's up? What is going on ladies and gentlemen, AJ Good here at the House of Masks and today's video is going to be a mask unboxing, review, and a tutorial. We are going to be repainting the mask that I have in the box here, uh, converting it if you will into a different version of the mask that Corey wore. But before we get into that, I wanted to ask you guys, what is your favorite Corey Taylor mask? I am genuinely curious to hear your answers down below. Personally, my favorite Corey mask of all time would have to be the self-titled dummy for a couple reasons and the main one being that when I first found Slipknot Wave back in 99 or 2000 or whatever it was. One of the first things I ever saw was the Wait and Bleed video and where he's talking at the beginning. Um, something about that scene and just the fact that that was one of my first Slipknot experiences stands out to me and makes that mask special. A lot of the other masks in the band have themes. Mick kind of looks like he's made out of metal. There's a spiky headed dude, there's a guy with a long nose, there's a jester, there's a clown, etc. But Corey's dummy just was weird. It had dreads. That was about the only feature recognizable on it. The rest of it just looked weird. I, I don't understand what he was going for, but I'm definitely glad that he did because the dummy is my favorite Corey Taylor mask. So what is your favorite Corey Taylor mask? Please answer down below and let's get into this unboxing. So the mask that I am unboxing today, as you probably guessed from the title and the fact that you clicked on this video, is another Corey Taylor .5 The Grey Chapter mask. And I got this super, super cheap from somebody that seems like they're kind of getting out of the hobby. And uh, the sculpt itself is supposedly pretty good, but the paintwork is shit, and that is fine because I am going to be redoing it anyways. When I had talked to Arthur about selling me this mask, I actually offered him a certain amount of money. He said that was too much, and uh, I ended up getting it Cheaper. So shout out to nice guy Arthur. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what we've got. First of all, it looks like there is a note in here that is mostly made out of penises and there is also a wheezing on there. So shout out to Arthur for the penis wheezing. I hate AJ Good Art. And there is a note. AJ, I know you will have fun messing with this mask. I tossed in an extra you can have fun with. If not, just give it away or burn it. I like that those are the only two other options. Love how much your collection and channel have evolved and grown. You have always helped me out and been a real guy. Be safe on your bike, and I look forward to seeing more posts and videos. Arthur Yole, AKA Unboxing Art. And then there is a drawing of a note that says, if you know anyone who collects action figures or toys, let them know about my channel. If not, no worries. So. So if you guys collect action figures or toys, make sure to go check out Unboxing Art there on uh, YouTube because he said that if you're into that, you should do it. So listen to him because he's nice. Okay, here we go. Here we have the Undermask, which is in a bag. We're going to pull it out there. There you have it. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad. There's some blemishes there on the pool, but the paintwork doesn't look that awful. I have most definitely seen worse. So yeah, there is that part of the mask. We also have the top half that Corey ripped off during the shows. Once again, not the worst that I've seen. I definitely think this is gonna make a good copy. I'm actually uh, impressed. I was expecting a lot worse when I opened the box. So there you have them together. And uh, by the end of this video, we're going to have the Ghost Panda version, or whatever you would like to call it. So go ahead and take a look at the other mask that he told me that I could have, give away, or burn. And those are the only three options. Oh, it's a Slam Dummy. Hell yeah. I'll definitely do something with this, because the one that I have right now that is converted is actually rotting. And it hasn't rotted anymore since I got it in my hands, but... Uh, It'd be nice to kind of salvage a copy and convert it so that uh, I have one that's going to outlive the other one. So yeah, hell yeah, man. Thank you. I appreciate that for sure. So hell yeah. Thank you, Arthur. It was a great transaction. Very fast responses. I got the mask incredibly quick and I am definitely satisfied with the price and the product itself. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this repaint. So the version that we're gonna be doing is probably my favorite .5 Cory. I know I said that about the tribal version, but honestly, I didn't even know that this one existed because I just overlooked the photos of it when I found them. Honestly, I thought it was his sloppy panda version or whatever you wanna call it, where he just put white and black on the mask. But after looking closer, there is actually a few different versions aside from the sloppy one and the Joker one. There's actually a clean one or a ghost one. I don't really know what to call it. It kind of 
kind of looks like the Panda version, but it is cleaner and almost translucent on the mask. So since finding that one, the Tribal version is no longer my favorite. I actually really, really like the way that the Ghost Panda version looks, and this is what we are going to be doing to the mask. So I just ran to Party City before unboxing. I got the cheapest little grease paint that I can find because that is what Slipknot uses. I don't know if there's as cheap necessarily, but in all actuality, it's going to be drying on the mask anyway, so I don't think it's a big deal. If you guys want to coat this afterwards with like a Plasti Dip, by all means, you can do that. I'm not going to be doing that because once this mask touches the shelf, it's probably not going to come off unless it's just to move it to another shelf. But yeah, black and white grease paint, that is literally all we're going to need. We're not even going to be using any brushes because I think this can be done with your fingers. And chances are, Corey did it backstage with his fingers, if you know what I mean. So the first thing that I always tell people when they are going to be doing a conversion or a repaint or whatever is to stack reference photos. Unfortunately, there are not a lot of photos of this mask, so we're just going to be going off what we can. But I think the paint job's pretty cut and dry, so I'm just going to be studying reference photos and making what I can make happen. We're going to be switching to the GoPro for the remainder of this footage until the mask is complete because it's mostly going to be a time lapse. It's pretty self-explanatory. We're just gonna study those photos and use our fingers to paint the mask the way that Corey would have backstage, trying to replicate it as closely as possible. So, so let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, here we are. Uh, I got my reference photos up and I'm ready to go. We don't need to do anything else other than paint the mask. In my other video where I converted one of these, we actually had to cut the mouth out because it was an earlier style. But as you can see, this one's already cut. I am going to throw this piece to the side for now. And I'm actually just going to be working on this piece here. Um, I actually think that I'm going to start with the black and get those eyes done in a little bit. Then I'm going to go over everything with the white and then come back and clean up anything that needs cleaned up um, around where the black and the white meet. So just dip into our grease paint here. This stuff isn't fun to work with because it really is just greasy. There is uh, nothing fun about that whatsoever. So. Go in there, start painting. As you can see, it's super translucent. Like I said, the uh, this is definitely going to need gone over more than one time, and that's why we're going to lay the black in first, let it sit there for a second, and then um, come back once we're done with the white. So yeah, I'm going to stop talking now. Uh, I'm probably going to throw on some music, and you guys can enjoy this time lapse of the repaint on this .5 Corey. Alright, so as you guys can see, we have got the first little layer done here. We're going to let this sit for a second and uh, go into the other one, but I just want you guys to pay attention to the fact that I'm not going all out in details right now. I'm just making sure that I have the general shapes of everything the way that it needs to be. So there's a little bit of wash down off the black onto the white here on this side, and there's like a nipple, if you will, just a little point out of the corner of the eye. Just make sure that you've got your shapes done, and then there's other details like the fact that the face paint definitely does come over these stitches on Corey's actual mask because I'm sure that just like I am he was sitting here finger painting with face paint so uh, we got it on the uh, leather pieces here and the rivets and the buckles and stuff and I just tried to get it down into all the little creases but basically this is just to shape everything into place and we're gonna let that sit but as of right now it's looking pretty good we're gonna come back over the black here shortly and uh, maybe some of the white on the eye right there because there is some detail where it looks like it's splotchy but we're gonna let that sit and start on this next one. All right, so I went ahead and did the white base on this. Now we're gonna start with the black that is up in the eyes. Um, there is no black around the mouth on this mask, so it's literally just the eyes on the mask and under mask. So we're gonna go ahead and smear that in. And honestly, on the under mask, to me, it looks super gray. There aren't a whole lot of reference photos out there, so I think he probably did the same thing that I did, which is based it out in white grease paint, which doesn't dry that quickly, and then went over it again in black, and it just kind of smudged into a gray color. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to try to get it as close to the color in the photo as I see, which pretty much looks like that. 
So I'm guessing that I'm correct on that one, and that's the method that I'm going to go with. If you guys disagree, that's totally on you, and you can do whatever you want. But chances are, you're not even painting a mask, you're just watching this video. So I guess it doesn't matter too much. Anyways, that's what I'm going to do, and more music. Alright guys, so I am pretty happy with this under mask. We're going to let that sit. Pretty much done with that. Um, I may go over this white again depending on how it looks once it dries. And I say dries because this shit takes forever to dry because it is grease paint. So we're going to let that sit on the side. And I am going to go back to the top mask and start looking at reference photos to do the eyes um, the way that they are supposed to be. So basically we've shaped them in and now I just need to kind of blend them together um, the way that they are supposed to be blended, not so harsh. Alright guys, so I think I am finished with the outer mask. I've got all the details down there. I've smudged a little bit of white paint over the black just to kind of give that washed down look that Corey's has. I've got the shapes the way that I want them. And uh, there's really not a way to mess these up because the paint moves around on the mask so much that you can always keep messing with it and get it to where you're happy. As you can see, we've got the nice translucent look. I'm stoked with it. I'm going to switch from the GoPro to the regular camera and maybe throw this on for some warm shots and just give you guys a nice up close look at it. So let's do that. Alright guys, so here is the mask worn. I will say one thing about the mask is that it fits goofy as shit. So I think Bobby Davis was the guy that sculpted this one. Um, I don't know what armature he sculpted on, but my eyes are like right here. And the eyes on the mask are obviously not, so that doesn't line up very well. Definitely not comfortable to wear as far as like the eyes go and shit. And I also wish that you guys would stop making these with felt buckles as the buckles because that is not what they did when they made these for Slipknot. I don't think that they ran to Walmart and got a bunch of belt buckles and stapled them to the mask. So aside from that, I really don't have any complaints. I think it turned out the way that it was supposed to. Um, I don't have any mannequin heads. That's why I'm wearing it. But uh, I just figured that'd be a good way to show the mask off. But yeah, here it is after it's been painted and stuff. I think that I'm a, more of a fan of the under mask on this one, which is weird because typically I am not. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely happy with the way that this one turned out. And if you guys do try to convert your own based on this video into this style or the video that I shot last time on one of these, um, please tag me on Instagram so I can check it out. I would like to see what you guys have. But yeah, other than that, I think that we are pretty much done. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you later.